Hey everybody, welcome back to another manga reading vlog. The first one that I did, I really enjoyed. So here we are with a second installment talking about some other cool books that I've recently read. Let's do it. Alrighty, let's get this show on the road. The first one here is Yokohama Kaidashi Kiko Deluxe Edition Volume 1 Story and Art by Hitoshi Ashinano. This is being published by the folks at Seven Seas Entertainment. This is the first of five deluxe edition sets. This first volume has the first 24 chapters. So without spoiling too much, we follow the android called Alpha. She's running a cafe left by her owner. The owner has left. We don't really know why, who that person is, where he's going, what happened. We don't know that. Instead, we are following the android as she is interacting with people in this post-apocalyptic scenario for humanity. All we know is that it was an environmental catastrophe, as it says in the back of the book. So it can be a little bit eerie when reading this stuff, considering where we are when it comes to the environment, global warming, and, and all that stuff. But for the most part, it's not about the sadness and anguish. Instead, it celebrates human life and how sometimes we forget to take a breather and enjoy the little things. I feel like this series exemplifies that. It celebrates that. And you have the character of Alpha, again, an android. She's interested in running her cafe and just living the best life that she can alongside the people around her. We see secondary characters that go into this cafe, which is not super crowded. It's only like a couple people every now and then. The majority of the stories here are slice of life oriented. There's not a huge overarching plot. Alpha does get some hints later in regards to her owner, wondering if that person will ever return, but it doesn't affect the overall vibe of this book. I love the art on this. It's cartoony in its depiction of characters, but the backgrounds, scenery, they're all there and it's on point. Wonderful looking book. It really made this a pleasant experience and I didn't feel like it was a slog to get through 24 chapters of uh, Slice of Life stories. Fantastic characters, a great lead with Alpha, a wonderful premise here to reminisce and sort of dissect the human experience in the face of catastrophe. Uh, but yeah, great art. Wonderful little story here. I can't wait to continue my adventures with it with volume two onwards because this will be a five volume set overall. Just really happy that I finally got to uh, sit down and, and check this out and, and a wonderful presentation from Seven Seas. I love the large trim size for stories like this. Next book that we're going to talk about here is Dinosaur Sanctuary Volume 2 by Itaru Kinoshita. This second volume is being put out by Seven Seas Entertainment. On the first volume, we had this cliffhanger story of Ichigo and what happened with that dinosaur's escape and how that led to uh, safety regulations being implemented on the park and what happened to Kaido Arata, the senior here who is teaching uh, the main protagonist, Suma Suzume, on how to handle the dinosaurs. So Ichigo's story is pretty interesting, heartbreaking, and something that you would see out of the Jurassic Park movies, if you catch my hint. And we're reminded, just like in real life, that these are wild animals, and uh, it's, it's great to love them, but we should also be respectful, mindful that uh, things can go bad. So you have to keep that in mind. So yeah, that was a major part of this book. And the rest is dedicated to more slice of life elements as our main lead, uh, Suma Suzume, is taking care of a hatchling and training that dinosaur to interact with others of its same species, stuff like that. The art is just as beautiful as the first book. Really enjoyed that. I love the attention to detail for the dinosaurs. It's an accurate portrayal, I think, for these wonderful creatures. Also wanted to point out that one of the best features of this series happens to be at the end of every chapter with the Dr. Dino's lab log, uh, the consultant uh, Shinichi Fujiwara giving out some wonderful text on dinosaur 
anatomy and dinosaur behavior and all these wonderful things. A really cool read that I highly recommend everybody check out. One of my most anticipated books of the year, Handyman Saito in Another World from Kazutomo Ichitomo. Phenomenal read for anybody out there that wants slice of life elements, isekai, fantasy, action, dark fantasy. It has a little bit of everything and of course comedy too. So in a nutshell, we follow the character of Saito. He is a handyman in our world. Good old truck coon happens to uh, send him flying to a different uh, dimension and he lands on this alternate earth that is run like a fantasy RPG. Saito is paired up with his team here. You got Morlock, the kooky, zany wizard. Lafanpan, a wonderful uh, healer fairy, or a moon fairy, I should say. And of course, Ryelza, a beautiful, badass warrior. And the four of them just get along so well. They really do complement each other. And even though at times Saito feels that he's not up for the task, that he doesn't contribute, he does in fact contribute a lot. He is that vital link that keeps this team running, as wacky as it may seem. So the majority of the story here is sort of the daily adventures, if you will. So you'll read a mini story here and it'll last for like two pages and it ends on a comedic note or a sad note or a strong one. I don't know. On a note, let's just say that much. And then it moves on to something else and we get introduced to other characters. At first, you might be thinking, huh, that's a funky little story mechanism, but it honestly works. In the long run, you'll look back at what you've read and you realize that the mangaka is able to lay the foundations and these quick jokes and scenarios for the overall story to make sense. So yeah, ignore the fact that it's an isekai. All you need to know is that he's there now, the main character, and you're gonna have a fun time with this, in my honest opinion. I am so happy that I finally own this and cannot wait to own volume two and continue reading the story. So yeah, highly recommend it. Level one Demon Lord and one room hero. This is by Tofu. We got volume three. I'm glad I gave volume two and three a shot because if the premise of a former Demon Lord and his younger self living with the former hero that defeated him, if that was it, it would have gotten old quick and I commend the story and Tofu for adding elements that make you want to come back. Yes, there is that silliness to it, but in this volume here, the story kicks it up a notch. The former hero, he was part of a party, and one of the characters decided to abandon the kingdom and founded the Gunmar Republic, and of course the main kingdom is not a fan of this, and wants to strip them of the land. And all of that drama is put on Max's shoulder, our hero, as he's pushed to make a choice between supporting the government and Fred or supporting the Gunmar Republic with Leo. He doesn't want to be a part of that. He would rather them sort it out because that's the type of character that he is now, but he is the protagonist people do come back to him for his former hero status and they want him to help them for their cause. So it's interesting to see how that scenario is going to play out and how the hero is forced to go back into action now that he's sort of a slob and retired and all that stuff. It's going to be interesting and I cannot wait to continue reading uh, this book. I really enjoy the art. It's wonderful as always. Great attention to detail. I love the fact that it's hyper detailed at times, but also retains its funny side and it's able to let loose and show some really wacky panels, great character faces, expressions and all that. So yeah, I do recommend it. If you can stand aside the pervy jokes and all that stuff, I think you'll have a lot of fun with level one Demon Lord and one room hero. The last book that we're going to talk about is Yakuza Reincarnation Volume 6, but I made a volume one first impressions last year and I ended up not talking about this until now. So I decided to catch up. I was like two volumes behind when I started recording this video. 
So I went ahead and reread everything, and I am a fan of this. I think Takeshi Natsuhara and the uh, art from Hiroki Miyashita, I think this team did a phenomenal job with this series. I am so hooked on this, and I am eagerly anticipating Volume 7, which comes out in like two months. I can't wait. If you don't know what Yakuza reincarnation is, in a nutshell, we follow a former Yakuza who is betrayed, dies, and is magically reincarnated in the body of a princess this alternate earth that is more fantasy based. The first volume dealt with the introduction and how uh, now the princess is back and she's a badass and she has this Yakuza mentality, but now she is getting to know the realm and the people. We get stories that deal with how bad it's gotten. This isn't a perfect kingdom, a perfect world, like our world actually, with a lot of similarities in regard to uh, political play and problems with uh, war, violence and drugs and all that stuff. Our main character is setting out on this journey to reclaim the throne, if you will, but also fix the issues from the different towns and stuff. The art is visceral. I love the character designs and the action, while kind of chaotic at times, works for the type of story. And as you keep reading along for Yakuza Reincarnation, you understand more of this world and the awesome lore behind it, just as Ryumatsu or Ryu is starting to learn about these things. So went ahead and read everything. I'm up to date with volume six, left on a really nice cliffhanger. Some really epic stuff went down that I cannot spoil. But if you've read it, please do let me know and geek out with me about the fights that occurred here, because there were some dragons, there were some dwarves, some demons, a lot of fist punching, a lot of really badass poses. I was head over heels with Yakuza reincarnation, guys. Really enjoyed it. Highly recommend it. Also, at the end of every chapter, the uh, writer, Takeshi Natsuhara, puts out really interesting essays on Yakuza lore. So that was a lot of fun too. Overall, fantastic, wonderful, kick-ass adventures here with Yakuza Reincarnation. Go check it out if you can. There you go. That is the second manga reading vlog for the channel. I'm very excited to put out a third one. So look forward to that soonish because I have been reading some other cool stuff that I want to talk to you guys about. So that's going to be it for now. If you have read these books, let me know in the comment section down below what you thought of them. If you haven't, recommend me some stuff that you think I should check out for future reading vlog videos. Very interested in finding out what you guys recommend. Also, before I leave, I do want to apologize real quick. I took forever to put this video out and it wasn't the most complicated video to produce. Unfortunately, it was just met with unexpected delays, real life issues. On one occasion, I was just waiting for a new mount for my phone camera and it never arrived. So yeah, that was time wasted. But nonetheless, thank you everybody. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for liking the videos, all the wonderful comments. I love every single one of you. The channel keeps growing and I am so happy about that. Even though it feels surreal to me, it means that you guys like what I do and want to see more of it. So I am committed for that and I will be putting out uh, more content in the upcoming months and I'm super excited about that. Thank you once again. God bless. Stay safe out there. I will catch all of you on our next video.